Hello and welcome to this Oak Tree English video on how to pass the SLC Functional Skills English exam. The SLC exam stands for listening, speaking and communicating, not in that order. This video will be focusing on the Pearson Edexcel exam and will be relevant for both level one and level two. Entry levels are very similar and we'll also be able to get some valuable insight from this video. The exam is in two parts for which you can prepare very easily. It takes place in a small room with two or three others from your class. An examiner will also be there with a camera, but just try to ignore them and talk naturally. The first part is a presentation where one person shares about something they are interested in or know about while the others listen and prepare to ask questions. You are marked on your ability to ask and answer questions as well as present. Now, you all have something you can talk about for a long time without pausing. This could be your job or your hobby or passion or life experience. The second part is a discussion where you will share your perspective on a topic and engage with the other people in your group. This is something you do in a group of friends down the pub all the time. It's just that this time you're being marked for it. I'm going to show you what the examiner sees. Level one, and level two are similar, but I will look at both schemes and try to decode them for you. And some of these can be helped with some stock phrases to let the examiner know that you've met the criteria. This is level one. Level two is similar and we'll look at it in a moment on the other side. However, uh, the criteria are identify relevant information and lines of argument in explanations or presentations. You can show that you're meeting this, this identifying relevant information by saying, you said, when you start to ask your question. Um, and that shows that you are engaging with the, with the topic, you're, you've actually listened and you've got something relevant to say. The next one is make requests and ask relevant questions to obtain specific information in different contexts. This is where you use open questions. Open questions are ones that start with who, what, where, why, when, how, these are question words. Closed questions are the ones that start with do, did, uh, are, am. These questions are closed questions because they, they can only be answered yes or no. If you ask those questions, then you're not giving your, in, your interlocutor, your, um, your colleagues, the opportunity to speak widely. Um, so ask open questions. Everyone in the room, apart from the invigilator, uh, everyone in the room is actually being marked. So even if you're not giving the presentation, you're still being marked on your ability to ask questions. Remember that because it's a, it's a fatal flaw to go in and think, Meh, it's them talking. I don't need to do anything. You do. Number three, respond effectively to detailed questions. Now this is for the presenter. The presenter will answer a why question with because. Uh, so if you're if you're asked why, you answer because. If you're asked who, you answer with a name, but also try and flesh it out. If you're given a question that you don't to which you don't don't know the answer, you can say, I'm sorry, I don't know that. But here's something I do know. Um, so if you if you ask if you are asked what is the the environmental impact of McDonald's on an area I'm sorry I don't know that I haven't done the research but what I do know is that McDonald's have improved their uh, their their policy in using much more cardboard and biodegradable stuff in their packaging by the way I'm not advocating for McDonald's they still have bad grammar and until they change their slogan, you should still be boycotting them just on grammatical grounds. Just saying. Um, 
However, that's something that you could uh, you could say. I don't know that, but here's something I do know. The next criteria you'll be marked on is to communicate information, ideas and opinions clearly and accurately on a range of topics. OK, this is uh, this is quite a fun one. You just have to communicate clearly. This is something you do naturally. You communicate with your peers naturally. You don't need to think overthink it. And the last one at level one, use appropriate phrases, registers and adapt contributions to take account of audience, purpose and medium. Keep it appropriate. That means you are in a speaking exam. Be aware that you're in a speaking exam and don't break into uh, Cockney rhyming slang. That's for you Londoners. Uh, don't break into um, West Midlands patter, my, my brummy friends. Uh, don't break into uh, slang. Don't break into um, swearing. You know who you are. Don't do it. Keep it appropriate for a, for a speaking exam. OK. Keep it polite. And yes, you know who you are as well. Level two is pretty much the same. I'm going to go through whiz through these and as well. You'll notice the six criteria as against the five for um, for level one. They're very, very similar. Identify relevant information from extended extended explanations or presentations. This is again your you said element. You need to follow narratives and lines of argument. This is again, you show that you have actually engaged, you're actually engaging with what your uh, what the, your colleague said and you will say you said that McDonald's uh, have improved did you mean that the quality of their food or more importantly the quality of their grammar has improved at which point you can say no not at all McDonald's still has uh, criminally bad grammar I'm loving it <sighs> calm calm don't talk about state of verbs in the present continuous. Calm down. OK, uh, the third third one you'll be marked on is respond effectively to detailed or extended questions and feedback. This is the same uh, as level one. And this is where you can say things like, I don't know the answer to that particular question, but here's something I do know. Try and make sure you extend your answers and give a full answer. Um, and for those of you asking the questions, don't interrupt them. Also, for those in, uh, asking the question, don't go into your own speech about your what, about your perspective on the topic. No one cares. You're all there to pass an exam, not to have a philosophical discussion. The next one, make requests and ask detailed, pertinent questions to obtain specific information in a range of contexts. So this is where you say, you might say something like, could you explain more about this particular aspect of your talk? Uh, could you tell us tell us your opinion about this aspect of the topic you're discussion discussing? Um, you and you ask questions based on what you have just heard them say. The next one, very similar, communicate information, ideas and opinions clearly and effectively, providing further detail and development if required, communicate clearly. It's the most basic one. If you can't get that one, you probably can't get any of the others anyway. Uh, and finally, use language that is effective, accurate and uh, above all appropriate to, con to context and situation. Remember where you are. Remember who your audience is. You're all on the same team. You know, work as a team. Keep it appropriate. OK, I'm going to illustrate what this might look like in a very short sketch. The actual exam will be longer and better. This is just to give you an idea. Now, the three candidates in question are the ancient Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. So here are the, those marking criteria we've just looked at. Uh, and Socrates has a very low voice, Socrates. Plato has a sort of tenor voice, Plato. And Aristotle 
has a slightly higher voice. So, Aristotle. Um, that is how you can distinguish between them if you're only listening and what not watching. If you're watching, then their heads will wiggle as they're talking. Plato, are you ready to start? Yes, I am. Hello, my name is Plato from ancient Athens. Today I would like to talk to you about my theory of the forms. Imagine you lived all your life in a cave, and all you have ever known of the outside world are shadows on the cave wall. You might see a horse shadow or a dog shadow, and you would know from the shape of them that they that they are, even though what they are, even though you had never seen a real horse or a dog. So when you see the original horse, which cast the shadow, you could recognize it by its form. I suggest that this is the same with, for example, love. We know what it is in this world because there is a perfect example of it, which casts its shadow down here, so we can recognize it. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? You said, oh sorry, Socrates, stand low. You said this form applies to love. Why do you believe that? Because we can all recognize, identify and experience love, which is not something which is found universally in nature. Therefore, it must come from outside the cave, so to speak. I understand the idea of a form or horse, but But you seem to extend this further. What sort of things have forms? Everything could have a form or a perfect example. I mentioned love, but this could extend to justice, mercy or even goodness. As you can see, these three friends paid attention and listened to each other which meant that they were able to appropriate res appropriately respond to each other. This is what you should aim to do in the exam, and indeed in life. Remember, thank you Plato, you can stop wiggling now. No, you're not going to, fair enough. Uh, remember that um, all of you need to speak, everyone in the room needs to speak, uh, and the person who's giving the presentation is being marked on different criteria from the others. Notice there's three criteria for each. So Plato have the, has the ticks in green, um, whereas Socrates and Aristotle have the ticks in sort of goldy orangey. Would you like to see this again? Of course you would. Well, in that case, stick with me. We'll do something similar in part for part two. Let's do the same as we did with the, uh, the, uh, the mark scheme for part one, for part two. Uh, this is the discussion mark scheme. You will notice that some of the criteria are doubled up from the first task and that level one and level two are once again very similar. I'm going to try and decode it again while giving you some signposting phrases that will show the examiner that you deserve the marks. So we start off. Uh, with point four, communicate clearly, uh, communicate information, ideas and opinions clearly and accurately on a range of topics. This is once again, communicate clearly. You should be able to do this. This is not a difficult, um, uh, not a big ask. You should also express opinions and arguments and support them with evidence. You can say something like, this is the best option because because you've got the word because and that shows that you're giving evidence, you're supporting your argument. That's crucial. Please make sure you do that. Point six is follow and understand discussions and make contributions relevant to the situation and the subject. Get involved. Get involved. You can use your you said phrase here to show that you've listened to your colleagues, but you can also say uh, say th other things like, um, 
I, I agree with you. I disagree with you. That's an interesting point. I somewhat agree with you. You can use these sorts of uh, these sorts of phrases that will help you to show the examiner that you've hit this criteria. Point seven is use appropriate phrases, registers and adapt contributions to take account of audience, purpose and medium. And this is once again, keep your language appropriate. Make sure that you you are speaking as if you would be speaking to people who are marking <laughs> marking a speaking exam. Stop me if I'm getting technical. And point eight is respect the turn taking rights of others during the discussion using appropriate language for interjection. Please don't leave anyone out. You can interject by saying things like, excuse me, I disagree. But look around the room, look at what who who is being being um, who is engaging in the conversation, who really isn't. Be the better person. Be the person who says to that to that person who's not engaging. What do you think, John? And then you leave space for John to answer the question. Make sure that everyone has an equal chance to engage. If it, if it helps, arrange with yourselves before you go into the room to go in a, a circle around the table so that each person is getting getting the chance to say something and make it clear in the words that you say that you are sharing the sharing the spotlight. Level two is almost the same. Once again, you'll see there's there's one extra. So there's five uh, five criteria and in level one, the six at level two. Let's have a look at what they are. Communicate information, ideas and opinions clearly and effectively, providing further detail and development if required. Once again, this is communicate clearly. Make sure you, that you're, you're speaking and you're putting your point of view across. Then you have express opinions and arguments and support them with relevant and persuasive evidence. Again, you want to be presenting your evidence. I think this because of that. I believe this because this tells me so. Uh, I have done I've done this research and that has given me this opinion. Backing back things up with evidence. Imagine you're on Judge Judy. Or Judge Rinder, if you happen to be in the UK. Use language that is effective, accurate and appropriate to context and situation. Once again, appropriate language. You're in a speaking exam. Act like you're in a speaking exam. Make relevant and constructive contributions to move discussion forward. Now, this is quite a good one. Uh, I think this and you. Um, so particularly useful, by the way, if John is not speaking, he might be not speaking because he has nothing to say on that subject. You can ch subtly change the subject very slightly. So if you if the um, the topic is environmental impacts, then you could change it from littering to pollution, for example. Um, and though John may have no impact, no interest in, in littering, he may be very interested in pollution and get his input input there. So that's that's a, a good a good thing to do. Adapt contributions to discussions to suit audience purpose and medium. Be polite, guys. Don't don't be don't be sort of the sort of animal that uh, swears at their colleagues. That's not OK. Um, be polite, be gentle, be courteous. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, as uh, someone very wise once said. Interject and redirect discussion using appropriate language and register. Again, treat people with respect. You, we are all uh, we are all human beings and therefore we are all deter we are all deserving of respect. Now, would you like to see how that works in practice? Of course you would. So our three friends, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle 
are now in a discussion about the idea of education. Listen to the type of language they use to meet the criteria. I put the level two criteria down the side there, uh, just behind Aristotle. So have a, have a look at that and see if you can match what, uh, what is being said. This is a discussion about education, as I said. We're starting with Socrates. I think the only the, that the only true wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. What do you think, Plato? I partly agree, but I also believe that if a man neglects education, he walks lame to the end of his life. For example, a fisherman may be a great thinker, but unless he learns how to express and develop his thoughts, he limps through his intellectual life, never achieving his full potential. <coughs> Aristotle, what is your view of education? I greatly benefited from studying under you, Plato, and I saw my favourite student, Alexander the Great, go on to great successes after my tuition. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So I can see merit in both perspectives. I like that idea, Aristotle. But I wonder why education has to happen in a school or Plato's academy. He is richest who is content with the least, for contentment is the wealth of nature. Do you both agree? Of course, I am convinced that academic institutions like my academy or modern schools, colleges and universities are valuable. But books give a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination and life to everything. So there are certainly other ways to learn. When you taught me, Socrates, uh, it was not in a college with other students, but I learned your lessons well. Sorry to interrupt, Plato. I would like to say that I learned well from you in a different environment. Plato and Alexander was homeschooled by me. So there are many effective forms of education. I suppose quality is not an act. It is a habit. Thank you, boys. As you can see, each of the friends shared their perspective and shared the conversation. No one was left out and despite having different opinions, they all remained polite and friendly throughout. This is what you should aim to do in your exam and in life. To practice this skill, you can spend time in court. The, the public gallery, please don't uh, get yourself arrested just to practice your debating skills. Or speakers corner if you happen to be in London or down the local pub. You will always find someone who's willing to debate you on something. I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and the philosophical and the content, as well as the uh, various rails against McDonald's. Um, and I hope you will use it to pass the oncoming exam. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe to Oak Tree English uh, so that you can know, keep abreast of further developments in functional skills. Thank you.